speaking of the NBA, one of the best to come out of Baton Rouge to make it to the next level was a top five pick, was traded for the second pick uh, as he went to the Chicago Bulls after becoming uh, one of the faces of the 06 Final Four run. He's from McKinley, from South Baton Rouge, moved back to Baton Rouge after a a decade in the NBA, a good friend of mine, and uh, stopping by here on uh, on this Monday morning is uh, is Tyrus Thomas. Good morning, Ty. How are you, man? I'm good, Jordy. What's happening? Good. Uh, as uh, as you and I spoke uh, Steve, a little. What's happening? I'm sorry. No, what's up, man? What's going on? Uh, I'm a... good. I'm good. As uh, you and I spoke yesterday, both uh, both from Baton Rouge, and we look around we look around the world and see it very uh, very much melting. Uh, and Tyrus, I just said from. From a radio standpoint, I wanted to hear, I wanted the people to hear um, a black man and a white man speaking publicly that have been good friends forever, that have uh, you know, no bias towards each other, and, and talk about where we can start to change from what, from what you see happening uh, in America and what you see happening uh, around us here in Baton Rouge. Uh, what changes can be made immediately? Oh, Man, I see that. I I guess the first thing I have to say, Jordy, bro, and it's like, like now it's just a, a totally different tone. And the first thing is like, just imagine being black. You know, and that's that's for anybody of any race. Like the first thing I think anybody could do is just imagine being black. And I don't think it's much else that needs to be said. You know, when, 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 you, when, when you do that, you know. Um, Imagine thinking about, Jordy, I'm sure you never have to think about anything when you go run around a lake or when you go work out or when you're in a neighborhood that you're not familiar with. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so, like, it definitely is it's one of those things where it's like, just imagine. you. Everybody reads the news. Everybody watches TV. Just imagine, you know, um, imagine, just imagine being black. I think that's what everybody really needs to do. Just really imagine being black. Because I don't think it's up to you know, um, the black friends to tell the white friends what they need to do to help or what they could do to help. I think it's more because it's more of just being a human, you know, being a human being, you know, um, and that's just from the individual standpoint. Now, if you talk collectively, you know, we, we're on a sports show. So, you know, if we want to talk collectively, you look at uh, shit, look at the NBA, right? Easy, easy on the cussing. I can't, I can't I'm do sorry, this. I'm it's, sorry. All, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I apologize. It's all good. It's all good. So uh, take the NBA, for example, right? So 70s and 80s, you had the Kirk Rambis and, and the Kareem Brawls, right? Yeah. Then the late 80s, 90s, you got the Bad Boys, right? And so at some point, David Stern felt that the image of the league was becoming bad and he had to do something, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And so what happened from there was, he 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 uh he initiated harsher penalties. You get ejections, you get suspensions, you get fines, right? Yeah. Think about the malice in the palace. Uh, Ron Artest and Steve Jackson. I want to say they they got suspended for an entire year. Yeah. Nobody died. Nobody lost their life. But they had to sit out for an entire year because what they did was bad for the image of the NBA, right? So even now, if a flagrant foul is committed. If they think it's a flagrant foul that's committed, what happens? The game stops, right? Yeah. The game stops immediately, and they go to the screen. They go to the review. They go to the body cam, <laughs> right? And they do an investigation there. And if they can't figure out, figure it out, they would rather assess a harsher penalty, a flagrant two, eject the player, and we'll go back and review it tonight. And if we were out of line for giving that harsher penalty, we rescind it. You don't get fined. Hey, you missed that game, but you won't get fined. You don't miss any more games, right? Yeah. And so my question is, how is it that the NBA has stricter standards than the police officers who are to protect and serve? Tyrus Thomas joining us here off the bench, ESPN New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Alexandria. Do you see immediate change coming from the past weekend in the people that you uh, talk to? Do you see change on the horizon, change in route? I don't know. I can't. I honestly can't say that I know. Um, you know, I don't. 
I don't know. And again, I don't. I, I want people to be clear that I think with this situation, especially from the black community, and um, you know, I do my best to speak on their behalf. But I don't think you see buildings on fire. I don't think you see riots if police are apprehended immediately. Yeah. If they are dealt with like a regular civilian is dealt with immediately. Um, I, I, I just, I don't think you have that, you know, and I want people to be clear that this is not like anti-police. It's just about accountability. It's about responsibility. And why aren't law enforcement willing to accept that, that responsibility and that accountability? Tyrus, um, could you describe just growing up for you, kind of your relationship or maybe even your community, wherever you grew up with, with police officers, because one, one thing that's wild about all of this to me to kind of think about is um, this is representative the George Floyd video, right? That's representative of something that has gone on forever. But what yeah. if there was no video? Like if there was no video, I mean, all it would be would be a line in a police report and nobody would ever hear about it again. I mean, well, we have thousands of those. And, and, and let's not, you know, it's thousands of those. And we can't forget that. We have to be mindful of that. You know, this is what we catch on video. So think about think about the, the the off duty cops that don't have any body cams on with nobody in the nobody no nobody that's affiliated with with their gang because that's what they are those that commit those type of crimes and they do it unconsciously and they do it repeatedly they are a part of a gang they are a gang they're not a task force they're a gang they're the same gangs that they're supposed to protect the, the community from so you can only imagine what they're doing when they're not uniformed when they don't have body cams on, when they don't have a crowd. And and so, Tyrus, something that I've always tried to think about, and honestly, I don't have a great answer, and probably a lot of it is because I haven't experienced a lot of it, right? But uh, how, like, what what could police officers, the force, and do to start to repair relationships with that with the communities that they're supposed to serve? Is it is it all about that accountability? I think, doing the first thing, I think the first thing I think the first thing that that police officers, well that 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 police department can do is first hold those those uh criminals accountable. Yeah. Yeah. Because in order in, in, in order in order for me to feel comfortable with you, you have to treat everybody the same. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Jordy, you always treated me the same. So it was easy to be comfortable around you. You treated me the same as you treated your wife. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but if you, if when people see a difference, hey, that's just like, again, we're on a sports show. So what happens when the coach has an obvious favorite? Right. He plays. Right. It, it, it messes up the chance of at a team. Yeah. yeah. And so now you got some guys saying this, some guys doing, and it's just that, hey, I got to be fully invested. And so I think the first step is to show the police department is to show the community that we are here to protect and serve, even if it's against one of our own. Because if it is, you're not one of us. Yeah. If you're one of us, you wouldn't commit these horrendous crimes because we are here to protect and serve. So I think, you know, when you say what can be the first thing before you can do community events, before you can do, you know, these these local gatherings, before you can do these hands-on things, you got to do what you're supposed to do, which is arrest, prosecute, and sentence those guys that commit those crimes because they are violent acts. They are violent acts of crime and murder. I don't know any other way to put it. And again, I'm not anti-police. Police, policemen in my family, policemen as friends, and I had the same conversation with them. You know, at some point, you got to hold your peers accountable. At I, some point. I am filling in this afternoon for the afternoon host. I want to call you again this afternoon. Can I do that? Between yeah, three yeah, and yeah, six? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Great to catch up, man. Love you, bro. All right, love you too, bro. There he is, Tyrus Thomas, checking in for a couple of minutes.